like I said before, also these things are not created equal, so I want to just go into more detail about the EN1092 and EN1092 requirements and I just want to talk about what kind of requirements we have there so you kind of get this good good idea of what kind of requirements you have to comply with and as this is actually really really beneficial if you have never seen a standard or if you have never read standard or if you have never received any training on how to read a standard so this it can be quite beneficial to under, understand what kind of requirements we are dealing with and so it kind of like makes it easier for you to understand what we are talking about in the third or the last section of this training. And the first thing I would just like to mention here right in the beginning is that the standard requires you to do something but it's really up to you to decide how you want to do it. So for example we can have requirement that it's related to the cutting and the standard can say that the cutting must be performed with mechanical means but it doesn't go into more detail on how you must perform the actual cutting process or it doesn't deal with the specifics on how you must adjust the blade and so on it just says that you must perform something in one way or you must do something but it's really up to you to decide how you want to do it and if we take another example for, for example from the standard EN 1091 that deals with the general FPC system. There's a requirement for the personnel that you must have a personal listing that includes the relevant experience that the employees have. And this is a requirement that you must have a personal listing and then you must record the relevant experience and the expertise that is related to their work. So that is the requirement, but you can naturally achieve conformity with this requirement in thousand and one ways. If you want to, nothing is preventing you from writing a personal listing behind an envelope with a pencil. And you just write all your employees there and their relevant experience and that's it. You have achieved conformity with that requirement. But then again, if you want to use Excel spreadsheet, you're free to do that. If you want to use just a Word document, that's okay. If you want to use a notepad, nothing is preventing you, or if you want to use some fancy uh, ERP system, it's all right. You can use any mean you want to. There is no restrictions on the means, only restrictions on what you must do. And this also relates to the standard EN 1092, that there are not step-by-step -step guides. They are just kind of like guidelines that you must follow in order to meet the requirements of the standard. And if I try to elaborate this point a little bit further, we can think about the EN1092 requirements as these boundaries that you cannot cross. Uh, here I have represented the requirements for mechanical cutting that are represented in the EN1092 as these orange bars. So we kind of have these orange bars that create the boundaries for the company to perform mechanical cutting. So as long as the company works within those boundaries, they, can, they are able to meet the standards requirements. So this, the company doesn't have to perform the cutting in so, just on some single way. They can have a, quite a lot of variation. So technically one company then can do the mechanical cutting this way and another one this way and the third one can do it like this and still each and every company, even though there's a huge variation between how each and every company performs the mechanical cutting, each and every company still meets the requirements for mechanical cutting that are presented in the standard EN 1092. What is funny is that the standards actually don't prescribe any continuous boundaries for a single manufacturing step. Instead, the requirements are kind of like sporadic in nature. So even though in the previous slide we have kind of like the requirements presented in this continuous manner that there are kind of like uh, requirements for each and every single step of the manufacturing process like uh, checking what the company specification says about the product that we are manufacturing and then collecting the material from the previous step and then adjusting the plate and then whatever and so on until the product is released to the next process but this is not actually the case but more accurate representation would be to uh, 
describe these requ requirements or boundaries or guidelines as sporadic. So there are some requirements that deal with one aspect of the manufacturing and then there are none requirements for some and then we have huge huge areas of the manufacturing that are not regulated in any way by the standards. So when the previous slide I presented that the company can work this way to meet the standard requirements. The fact is that there, there can be even more variation on how to perform each and every step. So the standards are really general guidelines on how to perform something. They are more, more like a listing of things that must be considered when manufacturing, especially with all the other requirements but welding. Conformity with the requirements can be achieved really fast and it's mainly due to the fact that most likely, most likely you are already meeting the requirements of the EN 1092. There are some things that you must consider and we're going to go over them in the next section where you most likely don't have a conformity yet. Like you must qualify each and every holding process that you're using. Uh, you must qualify thermal cutting or so on. So we're going to go over those in the, last, uh, in the next section. And because the requirements are so general in nature and they are more like guidelines, uh, sporadic guidelines that are related to each and every manufacturing step, this is the reason why our pre-made FPC system, our pre-made FPC documentation actually works. Because what we have done there is that we have taken all the requirements or mandatory requirements of, for the each and every manufacturing step, for, like for mechanical cutting, holding and so on. And what we have done there, we have summarized them into this really short description on how the work must be performed in order to meet the standards, standard EN 1092 requirements. So even though we call these, the collection of these requirements that we have prepared working instructions, I would say that the proper word would be a summary of the EN 1092. And what we have done in the FPC system basically is that we have split out the whole EN 1092 into small pieces that are related to each and every manufacturing step. So we have a, we have a kind of like a working instruction on how to do holding and how to do mechanical cutting and so on. And these working instructions include the, these orange pieces of the EN 1092 in a simplified English. And we have also gone over the reference standards of EN 1092. So you have the whole package there. So you basically just have to read the working instructions that are dealing with each and every manufacturing step. And in most cases, I think it's sufficient if you just read over the working instructions and see that you, and you kind of like make sure that you already work in that way that is described in the working instructions. So I think that's enough about the type of requirements we have in the EN 1092 and also in the EN 1091.